lockdowns, I know you're not happy. You're as pissed as I am. You're, you're tweeting about it all the time. Do you think there's any, do, like on the science level, do you just think there's any science behind any of this at this point? There, I mean, again, right now we can both walk out. We live about 20 minutes away from each other. Is there any science, but as they do remote interviews, why are you not sitting side by side on like a love seat together doing this interview, Dave? If you think that audience is bullshit and there's no science behind it and it's all just a scare tactic for socialism or something, why are you not doing this interview in person? Uh, this was apparently a part of a longer interview. Um, I wasn't really all that interested in the other parts, but I thought this one was interesting. Uh, it's an interview between Adam Carolla and Dave Rubin. And it is about if you voted Democrat, you voted for this. I don't know what the this is, nor I don't know what has happened yet, seeing as how Trump is still president. And the Democrats, we still don't even know if they're going to take majority in the House. But or I'm sorry, in the Senate. But um. Yeah, I, I guess we'll see what he thinks. I've been saying for a number of years that all roads lead to narcissism. And for the people I know who vote that way, they voted that way and they want to kind of will themselves yeah. to be correct. Because his ostensibly what you're saying is, is you're a Democrat. Yes, you vote Democrat. Yes. Then you're responsible for Gavin Newsom and Garcetti. Yes. Well, then you're wrong. The next thing you can say is you're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. And these are people that hate being wrong. They have huge egos. And what? Are you, what? Okay. What? What is wrong about what, though, Adam? You're responsible for Gavin Newsom and Mayor Garcetti. Like, what? What's happening? Are Are we going to argue that we should not have COVID restrictions? Is that what we're doing? That's probably what we're, that's definitely what we're going to fucking do. I, I know it. I already know. I, I, I'm just asking for a fact. I, I know the answer. And they never want to be wrong. So it's like a kind of a cognitive dissidence. It's kind of like, yeah, I voted for that guy. And yeah, he's doing a horrible job, but I'm going to vote for that party again because I'll, I, that way I'll never have to admit I was wrong. But you are wrong because they're running the state into the ocean. that many public people in Cali that are really publicly fighting the lockdowns and trying to get people back to work. Your whole, your whole sort of public. Is that really what it's about, Dave? Are they really trying to get people back to work? Is that what it's really about? Because I guarantee you a lot of these entitled fucks would go into your place of employment and you'd have to yell at these dumb fucks about not keeping social distance and not keeping their mask on. So you don't really care about the workers. You just want the work to be done. You just want your service to be provided to you. You don't care about people being unemployed. You don't care about people losing their homes, their business, their insurance, their livelihoods. You don't care about any of that. You care about getting the shit that you want. You're being inconvenienced is what the problem is. Public existence is, is sort of based around the value of work and, and your story about work and you like it. You like people that work basically. You see value in work. What do you, what's your take on just nobody's working? I mean, we got companies with people working, thankfully, but a lot of people aren't working. You know, I think the, the problem, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a left. I, I've never understood this mindset either. Like what is the obsession with work? What is the obsession with, hey, you have to be doing something. It's like, even if you're not providing any benefit to greater society, you just have to be busy doing something. Like, I am a firm believer in that people need something to look forward to every day. I don't necessarily know if that's work per se, but I do feel naturally as human beings, we like to have some sort of... Uh, I don't want to say structure per se, but something where you get up every day and it's like, hey, I'm doing something, whether it's contributing to a greater whole or it's just some personal thing that you just like to do. They just like to have a routine, something that they look forward to doing every day. That's fine. 
if you want to make the argument for that, that's fine. But to say people need to work, work gives people meaning. Like that's no, that's not true. What is that? What is, was that Nazi talking point? It is the shit about um uh, uh uh work is freedom or some shit like that. Like that's what that sounds like to me. I mean, I'm not trying to say that's necessarily what he's saying right now, but it's the same mindset. You know what I mean? Oh shit. This Democrat sort of mindset, which is why do you work? And the answer is to get money, to buy food, to take care of your family, to pay rent. Okay. Well, what if we just paid your rent and gave you food? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, that would seem to handle the problem mathematically at first glance, but you're forgetting about a super important part of work, which is self-worth and pride and self-esteem. And the yeah, yeah, I and I can agree with that, but it doesn't have to be done through work and it can be done through work on your terms. Like in the society that we exist in now with the technology, the technological advances we made, there's a lot of shit that we use labor for just because we have to keep people employed. We could automate so much shit in this country and on this planet. It's absurd. But the reason we don't is because people wouldn't have jobs. Now, like, like imagine, imagine a future where everything can be provided to you. But you have a crisis now of people don't have jobs anymore. Imagine that. Like, wouldn't it make more sense to adapt society around the technological advances that we've made? Like, hey, we don't need hundreds of people fucking caring for a farm. Like, one family can do it. Like, a father and a son can do it. A guy can do it in a lot of cases. And a couple of, like, people to pick the shit from the fields. Like, in another 20 years, when we make even more advances in, like, the, the minute movements and robotics and shit like that, we can automate damn near everything. But then we're going to have the problem of, well, do people don't have jobs now. Okay, so what? That's the, the, the issue has always been people work to produce things so we can survive. Well, now, if we have something that automates the production, you don't need to tie their survival to them working anymore. It's not necessary. It's like it's like they cannot even wrap their mind around the idea that there will come a point in the very near future where we're going to have so much automation that there won't be a job for you to go back to. Then what? We can't just say, make new jobs. That'll happen anyway, but they'll be automated. Then what? That's the problem. They cannot get out of this mindset of the way society is structured now, the way the economy is structured now is the way it will always be and it can never change. It will change, it has to change. Or you're gonna have a society full of like one percenters and then homeless people. If there's no need for the jobs to be worked through human labor, there's no reason for those people to suffer. The things that need to be provided are being provided. Stop tying their survival to work. the depression that kicks in and all that once you get on the dole. So their thing is they have this bizarre approach to reverse engineer everything. Like, hey, if, if a lot of young black teens are being suspended from schools, then stop suspending yeah, young black yeah. teens. It's like, okay, that's not going to fix anything. If, if, if homelessness is illegal, then don't make it illegal anymore. Like this, <laughs> and Gaston is that way too. Right. It's like, hey, the prisons are overcrowded. How do we fix that? Let everyone out of prison. Well, that obviously doesn't fix, you know, the... For one, no one has ever said let everyone out of prison, but a good chunk of fucking offenders that are in there for nonviolent crimes and shit. Yeah, yeah, you can let them go. 75% of the kids can't. No, and no, they're not all the same. No, no, not, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love I love the the how he's equating um black kids um being expelled 
and letting people out of prison to each other. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that seems logical. Yeah, I could see how you could draw that line straight across. Yep. Can't do uh, math at grade level. Well, then lower the test scores. It's like, okay, your car's not going fast enough. Well, then bust the glass of the speedometer and take your finger and turn the needle up to 80 miles an hour. You're still going 23 miles an hour. Why is it, though? I think I've asked you this publicly on the show last time, and I know we've talked about it privately. Why is it, though, that so many people cannot make the jump from the stupid decision also also i love how they started this off talking about gavin newsom and mayor garcetti they're destroying this state and these covid restrictions and they need to let people go back to work and blah 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 blah, blah. but yet they're doing this interview remotely they both live in california probably both in la or close interesting that they wouldn't be in the studio together. Why Why aren't you doing in-studio interviews anymore, David? Huh. ...to their involvement in the stupid decisions, that no matter how many times they vote in people and policies that make everything worse. Like, right now, if you and I walked out of our studios and we just started talking to people on the street, and you said to people, how's it going in L.A.? Everybody would say, man, it's a freaking mess. Or if you said, how's Gavin Newsom doing? They'd all say horrible. No, there's nobody defending these people. You know, like, there's the rabid sort of crazies. But who, who, what? You just saying words what okay pretty much nobody else but why is it and is it, is it it's not the covid they fear it's the toxic air of la oh okay that's what it is just because of the weather it has fried all of our brains basically it's nice out so people cannot realize that the, the stupid easy answers aren't the actual answers i've been saying for a number of years that all roads lead to narcissism and for the people i know who vote that way they voted that way and they want to kind of will themselves yeah. to be correct because his ostensibly what you're saying is is you're a Democrat. Yes. You vote Democrat. Yes. Then you're responsible for Gavin Newsom and Garcetti. Yes. Well, then you're wrong. The next thing you can say is you're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. And these are people that hate being wrong. They have huge egos and they never want to be wrong. So it's like a kind of a cognitive dissonance. It's kind of like, yeah, I voted for that guy. And yeah, he's doing a horrible job, but I'm going to vote for that party again. because I Horrible in what way? What is the metric that you are looking at for success here? I, I'm curious. I, I, that way I'll never have to admit I was wrong, but you are wrong because they're running the state into the ocean. The state has no money. There's homeless people everywhere, drug addicts. Our education's horrible. Do you think maybe we should try voting for somebody else? Did, did you see when... Uh... <sighs> Every program that has ever been suggested to do something about homelessness, Republicans buck. Every program that, that that tries to do something about um, um, the education system, Republicans buck. Like, I, I. I don't know what they exactly like people who genuinely believe in conservatism that aren't grifters, that aren't just dog whistling and shit and, and just know like they're completely full of shit. The people who actually believe in their cause, what do they think a Republican administration whether it's in local or national government will do or can do or would implement or support that democrats currently don't that would actually do something about these problems what is your solution for the homeless crisis don't give me no self-responsibility shit that's not going to fix it what are you as governor going to do about the homeless crisis in california what are you going to do about the education system? You don't believe in raising taxes. You don't believe in wealth distribution. So what are you going to do? Just close all the public schools and tell these people like, hey, you're on your own. Hey, we're privatizing education. If your kid can't get into one of these private schools or charter schools, you're fucked. Wait, are we turning every school into a private and or charter school? Everything is school of choice now? Like, is, 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 that, is that the idea? So now, not only if you're poor, you can't get a higher education, but if you're poor, you can't get a general education. Or we're just going to have less schools and send everyone to the charter in private schools, right? And then overfill their classrooms, right? And then expect people not to fall through the cracks. What is the conservative solution to these problems? I really want to know. Uh, who was it? Um, Bill Maher had Adam Schiff on, 
And Mari's complaining. Mari's going, oh, all of my friends are leaving LA because of high taxes and blah, blah, blah. And Schiff's like, oh, well, we're the business friendly party. And it's meaningless what he's saying, of course. But I wanted to kind of smack Bill Maher through the TV and be like, what are you talking about? You are the one that's supporting all of these people. And then all your friends leave and you yeah. wonder why you're alone. Well, it's not oh God, oh God, oh God. The rich people are leaving. And also, I'm sure it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that like half the state's been on fire for the last like year or so. That has nothing to do with anything either. Sometimes they don't even say we're the party of. They just go, well, people are leaving because of overregulation and high taxes and a bad business environment. It's like, yes, they're leaving because of all the policies you enacted. Those are your policies. That's why they're leaving. Yeah, they, they seem to be unable to make that, that jump. Lockdowns, I know you're not happy. You're as pissed as I am. You're, you're tweeting about it all the time. Do you think there's any, do, like, on the science level, do you just think there's any science behind any of this at this point? They're, I mean, again, right now, we can both walk out. We live about 20 minutes away from each other. Is there any science, but as they do remote interviews, why are you not sitting side by side on, like, a love seat together doing this interview, Dave? If you think that all this shit is bullshit and there's no science behind it and it's all just a fucking scare tactic for socialism or something why are you not doing this interview in person it's just you and adam and then who's ever you know doing the camera work and shit behind the scenes that wouldn't hit capacity limits i know it wouldn't for the square footage of your studio you'd be fine so why is he not there you cannot complain about the lockdowns when you're doing remote interviews you clearly know better so why are you telling your audience is bullshit one day guys <clears throat> one fucking day i swear to god one day we are gonna do i don't know who dick i'm gonna have to suck well like i said i've been talking to prime k so i'm trying to get on one of them debate panels i i i will get to the point where i will confront these people and i'm gonna call them on all this fucking bullshit i swear to god that is it, my one goal in life is to call these motherfuckers out to they face about this shit one day, one fucking day. <sighs> yeah, I left my high school town after it burned down. <laughs> yeah, right. But we can walk outside of our houses. It's a beautiful day as it always is. We cannot sit outside and have a coffee because of lockdowns. Yeah, at a place where you purchase a yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah. I think you yeah. You could probably go up to your roof deck. Yeah, and you're always welcome on my together. roof deck. <laughs> um, Actually, I, well, you are welcome on my roof deck, but according to Garcetti, you're not supposed to be on my roof deck. Oh, right. Well, a lot of it is, you know, most of it is the crops are dying. We need a virgin to throw in the volcano. And someone goes, how's that going to help the crops? And they go, you shut up. I got to do something. The villagers are upset. They want action. I mean, whoever the... the uh... Do you really believe that not having lockdowns would do something to stop the surges? Is that really the argument? Because you're saying, okay, we can only do so much. Like the like the virus is going to take its toll. We're not going to be able to mitigate it down to nothing. You're admitting that. That's what his whole analogy of throwing the virgin into the volcano because the crops are dying and shit. It's like you're, you're, you're admitting that we can only mitigate this so much and that some of it has to just be a show of force for the public to say like, hey, we're doing something. You're admitting that, right? I swear, let him talk for five more fucking minutes and he'll be a fucking vaccine denier. Health minister or, or czar, whatever, of Los Angeles, as much as admitted it. It's like I said, outdoor dining isn't dangerous. We don't have any data to support it's dangerous, but we want people to stay home. They literally said and that. You're some... not making that up. That is what yeah. the guy said. Yeah. Well, first things first. Do you get to decide who stays home? That's your job? Your job is I will decide when you get to leave your house and even if it's for spurious reasons and there is no direct correlation between any danger who is telling you you have to stay home i really get sick of this like we cannot keep letting them get away with this talking point who is telling you you have to stay home who you can't get into large gatherings in public places or eat indoors that that does not mean stay home you just can't go to the movies. You can't go to the fucking salon. Well, I think those might be back open again in Cali. I don't know. And 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 you can't eat inside restaurants. Like, like what? You can still go outside. You can still do shit. Danger of spreading the disease and eating outdoors. I'm still just going to make this. Also, Pingy, did you, you change your hair home. again? I mean, it's a very. It's funny. Or did you just change the picture? Slid by a lot of people, but 
it's it's a very scary precedent when the powers that be are essentially saying you're going to stay home because I told you to stay home. And then you go, give me proof why I should stay home. And they go, I don't have to give you proof. I told you to stay home. That's that's not even kind of what's happening. Every time they've given any reason, you dispute it. And, and you say that's not a good reason. Even once you've gotten through all your talking points, you've gone down your entire dialogue tree and you've ran out of excuses, your answer ultimately is. I feel that I should have the choice whether or not I want to put myself at risk. So it's like it doesn't matter. No matter what we say, ultimately, after we've ran down all the excuses, you'll just say, well, I want to have the freedom to, to make the choice of whether or not I, I expose myself. So it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, don't pretend. Do not sit in this fucking cave of, of wisdom and just like absorb all the, 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 the hot takes that you have and know that you're right and just sit with this smug bullshit around you and go, well, if, if they would give me a good reason to, then maybe I would. It's like, no, you, you know you wouldn't. There is no reason that'll ever be good enough. And if there is, you'll just say, I don't care. I want to have the freedom to choose whether or not I do or not. So it's like, uh, okay. Oh, you collect wigs. Okay, there we go. That makes sense. But are you shocked how quickly we all became sheep? I mean, everybody, everybody. Well, what, what, what I've realized, what, what has happened is, California especially, Los Angeles especially, it's so overregulated, it's so burdensome, it's so it's so tyrannical and its its leaders are so tyrannical in terms of its burden that they put on the taxpayers that we all got sort of indoctrinated into this slowly. Like imagine trying to pull this shit off in 1955. Right. People just be like uh Ima imagine trying to pull this off in 1955. I can imagine it happening successfully. And with the same amount of dumbass motherfuckers arguing against it. Even earlier. Does he think that we didn't have fucking quarantines and shit and lockdowns during the Spanish flu? Does he think we just let that shit just rip through the fucking country and just kill just indiscriminately? Like, does he really think that? <sighs> hey, what's up, genocidal? Uh, no, I'm not staying home. Nope. And by the way, I'm, I'm, by the way, when I leave my house, I'm taking my gun in case one of you assholes try to try to arrest me. Like that's where we would be at. But it was a slow, quiet indoctrination of. I mean, think about what you can't do. Here's what you can't do. Here's what you must do. Here's all like, like I think they really believe that they just let the fucking Spanish flu just rip through the fucking country. I think they don't think that they did any lockdowns, any kind of quarantining, any kind of mitigation, you know, um, 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 avenues to try and slow the spread and, and, and quell the loss of life. I think they legitimately believe that it was like the Wild West still and like people were going around and if you coughed, they would just shoot you and, and just keep on going. And it was like only the strong survived. Like, this is so dumb. This is so dumb. He's like, in 1950s, you wouldn't be able to... Uh, this, oh my god. Talking about sheep in the 50s? And you're calling us sheep now? Man, oh my god. That was when we were at peak conformity. Was during the 50s. The 60s, we finally started breaking out of that shit. But the 50s, holy shit, we were at peak propaganda, peak conformity, peak just trust everything the government says and does. Like, holy shit. Like, okay, I should say the mid to end of 50s, we were finally getting out of that. But the early 50s, yeah. <sighs> In 1918, there was a total ban on any grouping of people, and the cops would actively charge in and break up meetings. It was like that until almost 1922. I know. I know. I know. We 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 sat on stream and went over, like, newspaper headlines and articles and shit talking about... And, and even back then, 
these fucking religious zealots still wanted to be able to gather together and pray and they let them do it as long as they opened the fucking windows. I was like, oh my God, they, they probably made that shit go on longer and infected more people than it probably would have by like thousands. Okay. All right, go ahead. Continue. All the things, you know, you, you can't smoke in a restaurant. Okay, well, I'll go to the smoking. No smoking. Oh, then I'll go to the bar. No, no smoking at the bar. Well, then I'll go to the patio. No smoking at the patio. Like, it's such a crazy... Uh... Is he advocating for bringing back smoking indoors now too? Holy shit! <laughs> it's so fucking... They are fucked, man. They are just... Oh, you can't smoke indoors. Oh, you gotta smoke in that room over there. Oh, you gotta smoke outside. Now you gotta smoke on the patio. Now you can't smoke... Like... Is that... Like, he is an, a, a grown adult man making an argument for smoking indoors. I know that's not really his argument, and he's just trying to use it as an example, but it's like, of all the things you want to be upset about being banned... That's what you want to bring. Holy shit. Is Philip Morris sponsoring this fucking video? What the fuck? Oh my God. Holy shit. Oh boy. Um, Stockholm syndrome that everyone lives. Everyone who lives in California has a kind of a Stockholm syndrome. Like, I would I say all the time, hey, your business, your restaurant, there's no reason why you need to shut down your outdoor dining. You've made a lot of concessions. You spent a lot of money. Just F these guys. Stay open. And everyone's like, uh, I don't want to get into trouble. Well, that's what the overregulation has created. This, this wait. Wait, 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 Lawful orders is Stockholm syndrome. Okay. We've established that. Why do you hate BLM and Antifa so much? Why do you hate rioting and looting? Why do you hate crime? I don't understand. Isn't obeying laws... In legal declarations, isn't isn't that, you know, being sheep in Stockholm syndrome and shit? Ain't we supposed to be rising up against this tyranny? Also, wouldn't that apply to every society that exists because they all have a government and they all have federal laws? What? What? <sighs> oh boy. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm making too much sense. I know this, this huge sort of umbrella always, you know, under the guise of safety and everyone is just scared, but, but slowly scared. We're like, upholding this, the constitution by declaring secession, right? Think about, think about, you know what? Think about the beach. I always talk about the beach, but think about the beach. Also, when did, how fucking low has the conservative, like, like uh social standings fallen that like adam carolla is like some kind of like conservative pundit now adam carolla the guy from the man show i okay like, imagine telling someone from the 50s in Malibu, hey, hey, you can't have that cigarette on the beach. What, what are you doing? I'm drinking a beer. You can't drink a beer on the mm -hmm. beach. I mean, you look at the sign. I always tell everyone, look at the sign at the beach. Uh, in the 50s, they didn't have a sign. At some point, it was like no bonfires between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. You know? They didn't have AIDS in the 50s either. What? What do you... <laughs> what do you... What? what? Uh, heroin there wasn't a heroin epidemic in the 50s either so you wouldn't have to worry about like stepping on needles and shit at the beach and shit like what <sighs> oh my god oh my god 
genocidal oh my god oh my god he doesn't come here anymore because i think we ran him off because i think he thought we were being mean to him um there was a guy who would come in and and argue in the discord and he came on stream a couple times arguing about not wanting to wear seat belts and holy shit i couldn't i just couldn't i was like i i can't i can't with these arguments i i literally just cannot <laughs> like like after a while i just start shutting down like my brain just turns off like i just i i can't you know what I mean? Now it's like no frisbee, no, no dogs, uh, no football, no cigarettes, no literally no, no humans, no humans. Like, like literally, yeah, no humans yeah. on the beach. I mean, think about what, think about how they ratchet it up. Think about how the sign gets longer. They always add something to the sign. They never remove something from the beach sign. Every year, there's two more things you can't do on the beach. And when you go physically look at those signs now, it is a, a scroll of things citizens can't do on our beach. If you're looking for more, what the fuck is he talking about? Who is the hour here? We collectively elect representatives that we feel will serve the best interest for us collectively. If you personally don't like it and you and a handful of other people that you don't get to just overturn the will of the larger group. We democratically decide how these. Oh, my God. Our beach. And I love how we're equating fucking COVID lockdown restrictions to fucking smoking and drinking on the beach. Oh my God. <sighs> Pinky, I love you. <laughs> I don't bring my dog when I want to meet new dogs. I love it. I love to see how the branches of his conversation connect to the tree in his head. Not saying I'd understand, but I'd like to see. I, 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 oh my God, right? The connections that they make. Oh, this, I, I can't even, like, I saw this too, but I'm so sick of arguing about the election. I'm like, I, I don't care. I, whatever you got to say, you, you know what? You're right. Biden stole the election. Um, Hugo Chavez fucking, um, his ghost, uh, possessed all the dominion voting machines, the dominion voting machines and the smartmatic voting machines were used in every election all across the country. Uh, it was stolen. Uh, the Jews are controlling the narrative, whatever. Just, I, I, you can have it. Yep. I can see I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I don't even want to have these arguments no more. I don't even care.